Welcome back, family, friends, and acquaintances, I guess. Mitch and Rosemary are joining me for the last game of the day. We're going to see M80 take on the Pirates in pajamas. So let's dive straight into those rosters. Now, uh, you actually, in our NA pre-show, already uh, talked about uh, the M80 roster uh, overhaul. So give our viewers a TLDW, too long didn't watch, and catch them up <laughs> on the changes. Hey, I'm always happy to talk about this M80 roster. I feel like they're just one of those teams that you will always expect to see towards the top of NA. And how could you not feel even more confident in that when they've got the additions of Happy and Liar into the roster. Liar has had so much experience on this Lucio, so really able to bring that to the team. But Happy and Pelican playing together? Mitch, I feel like what a throwback we've got to the 2023 season. Uh, and they were unbelievable, right? What a dynamic duo to reunite. I really feel like M80 have streamlined this roster very heavily. There was a lot of like leaning into, so I guess, that synergy of the you know, Spectre and Hydra a little bit and sort of rotating them in. But the Happy Pelican duo it is a big deal. And especially when, you know, ping stops being an issue, then this ex Houston Outlaws setup is, is going to absolutely pop off. They had a Honestly, they had a pretty competitive matchup against Unk Inc. I'm going to call them yesterday. <laughs> uh, fairly young. I don't know, man. Come on, like, you know, we need like quality filters in some, <laughs> some of these names. <laughs> you think I'm going to use? I'm not going to spill out that acronym. There's no way. But again, so um, they're still fighting their feet, I think. Uh, and I'm expecting a fairly competitive game up against a Pirates in Pajamas team who's shown their capability in that stage one. They've now brought Arnie Uni in from Dreamland and Taejong's now joined the roster. So yes, less known as a unit. It's a massive roster as well, but they managed to take down Chikigami Hikari yesterday. Uh, that was a team that obviously featured pretty heavily in our group stages in stage one. So I'm feeling like they're coming in with some momentum at least. So at least feeling a little bit of it, right? I think if you take a look at this group and you segment out who you think will make it out of the group stage, you look at M80 and Pirates in Pajamas as the two teams that are most likely to do that. Uh, so I think this might just be a bit of a taste of what we can expect to see in the main event. Yeah, we're looking to see how M80 hit the ground running, right? We've already seen, they've obviously they've already played a game in this group stage. And like I just said, a little close, like, you know, uh, a 3-0 in fairness, but definitely a lot of back and forth amongst that series and a lot of different picks. Like we saw Hawk on the Diva, uh, the Orisa, the Sigma and the Winston throughout that series. So yes, showing his flexibility, but also M80 looking like they were still trying to, you know, fit into a bit of a rhythm there. Again, you know what to expect from Pelican and Happy. Uh, it's gonna be Pelican playing Tracer. I'm hoping we get some, some echo. There, where there are some maps that sort of suit that. Same. Not so sure if, uh, you know, that's going to be amazing in this first round. We have seen Echo here on this particular stage. We have, and I would love to see some more Pelican Echo as well. I know it's one of his favorite heroes to play. That's one of our favorite heroes to watch. But I think you also have to take a look at what's going to be one. the most beneficial round for the one. team. And Capture I don't always feel like uh, that the Echo is as self-sustainable as I think no, you might so. want it to be, especially if you're on Ooh, That's tough. Yeah, 100%. It definitely needs some infrastructure build around it in terms of team comp, and sometimes that's just too restrictive. The <laughs> Tronto <laughs> going to work. Mayfall not ready for that push there. Hello, Happy. Explodes onto that high ground here. Strata being knocked off, and my goodness, M80 ran this down pack straight away. Anion, she's going to have to get out. She does, but an absolutely brutal start here for Pirates in Pajamas. The <laughs> Torp Turret garnering some attention there in main somehow. I, I, I think the Torp Turret's going to help out a lot. Uh, you might be playing on ping. Your turret sure is not going to be doing that. So a little bit of extra DPS output. I think what's really nice about having the Torp Yarn 2 to actually give it some merit is the fact that you have this ability to lock down some of these flanks that might be coming through from Stone. Or even Anion if she's going to be teleporting back into uh, some of the other kind of DPS members to give them a hand. Oh, it's yeah. extremely troll against Tracy. It is so effective in that matchup, but also it's like a higher ping option. It's pretty, pretty reliable to go for. So, Chronic here looking for an opening. They were very little presenting themselves. Stone at least has been able to get amongst the low ground here on this side. But right now it's all about trying to put some pressure down on the hawk. Venture Pelican's turret is going to be picked off. He's had a lot of impact with that already. Oh, Chub Island sent Karimi over the edge by a Magic Mate Ball. We shook it. The answer was yes. You may have the point. <laughs> I, I think you have to take a look at that April again, though, and see what it's going to come up with next. Because uh, you get to keep the point. 
yes, no, or whatever the other like 12 options are that could come out of that thing. But M80, like, uh, they've already done quite a bit of work here. I think what Pirates and Pajamas oh, yeah. now have, though, having that point control is a little bit better angles to play around with this Arissa. First stop is this high ground. Yeah, I think remembering that toy, or ever having held one, might make this room is... Uh, now it's like, now I'm realizing now, like, a lot of, uh, a lot of this current generation might not ever have asked the question of the Magic 8 Ball. Either way, Pirates and Pajamas don't have time to be consulting for advice. They need to get themselves out here on the point. They push themselves through this air matrix. I like that approach, but it ends up being Onion that takes a riveting shot there from Pelican. Trying to be brought down. Now Pelican has a nasty little off angle and a bolt of course for the next fight. Of course, nice to just have a little bit of territory control, especially if you expect Pirates of Pajamas to try to come through the small room or try to get access to that high ground. Get on top of the turret, actually. Let's go ahead and uh, throw that ultimate down and see what they can do against it. Pirates of Pajamas don't have that vertical mobility either. Not like Hawk has on the Diva to be able to just kind of slide away. So, uh, gotta, yeah, I actually listen to Lucio here. Gotta go quick. That's it. Gotta make the play happen here, around that sound barrier. The high ground control over something that's gonna take a little longer to assume. Maxi Mabel doesn't wanna take the risk of going up there right now, and here comes the modern ball. That's on the low ground. Happy interrupted during that dead eye. Sound barrier comes out here from Hope Lucio is almost simultaneously. It's a lot of pressure that wants try to force back. Walk of course able to retreat to some degree behind that defense matrix. Oh, we're taken down as he tries to interject him with a self-destruct reset on the neck. He's trying to force now. Pelican could turn his attention to the Kiriko. None of us have much left to do anyway. Now it's going to get in. Should just be a point capture here. I don't even know if the Lucio can touch if it's just scooped away. So uh Liar able to play the keep away there to secure that first objective for a maybe. Uh, but this is kind of what we expected, right, Mitch? Like taking a look at this first map, it really should be coming up all M80 here. Yeah, it looked very hard for sort of Pirates of Pajamas to get the high ground consistently, especially with like the displacement potential that Hawk offers, uh, Pelican operating off angles pretty effectively, also making it half a stone to flank. So your ability to pinch M80 or even like to force them out of position kind of isn't really there. So we saw Pirates of Pajamas like they speed into like a defense map, uh, an ant matrix rather, just to try and like, you know, take M80 by surprise. They had a decent goal though, right? That fight ends up going in their, uh, in their favor eventually. They'll make it competitive, but not quite on the same level there in that first round. Let's see what City Center has in store. Once again, Diva for Hawk, Pelican on the tour. <laughs> Uh, now maybe do we get to see like a bouncing corp turret? Um, uh, we see a bouncing Lucio actually. Oh, Strider. I saw what the idea was there. He didn't actually have the room to push Ultraviolet outside of his immortality field. And eventually gets punished for it. Bit of an overextension there. The rest of the fight has been back and forth. Not enough though to give Pip a chance for a first point cap. Uh, I, I think it's going to be so tough to contend with the diva on the high ground. I think you're always going to struggle if you're Pirates in Pajamas to actually take that elevator up to the top and keep it. Uh, and especially when you have, uh, you know, the poor turret or even just the Cassidy coming through from Happy. There's a lot of ways you can lock down that high ground away from the pit. Uh, so they're going to take this low ground approach now. Very annoying turret placement there for Pelican. Can't wait really to be seen unless you push up into it. Do they have Lion here? No. He's able to skid away. Still healthy enough, in fact, to hold his ground and send some shots back in the direction of the Pirates. Who right now, trying to reclaim the point. They finally clear that Torp turret out of the way, but that can be refreshed in a few moments. Back with Aid stuck, and he doesn't know to do. But doesn't particularly matter. He needs to keep that damage coming. To keep the Pirates at bay here. Now a 44% of cannon is going to be a sound there. Exchange with Chronic. Oh dear, Magic Maple couldn't build his in time. And that ends up being a one-sided fight, to be sure. And you only needed a sound barrier to do that. That feels so good. Especially as a response to something like the Kitsune Rush. Usually you go for the Kitsune Rush and you go, nine times out of ten. It's a very powerful ultimate, and that could be a fight winner. Especially if you can capitalize on it and pair it with another ultimate. But, uh, maybe, uh, they get to hold on to literally everything else. 
and uh, it should realistically be a fight win here. They don't have to play around the Terra Surge, um, and they also have the Amplification Matrix to help boost up some of his damage with Pelican and Matthew. Uh, he's leading over it. I know, it's the Molten Core's gonna make it really hard to advance. Pelican at least is gonna fall to the Pulse Bomb here, but the Immortality Field keeps the rest of their mate standing. He's trying to... Went down to that engagement though. You've lost your Orisa, so now how do you put pressure on this Diva? Try and close the gaps. The Sensor Matrix completely shuts you down. Dead Eyes staring each other down. Connick's gonna come out on top despite them against Sensor Matrix and play. I don't know how you're supposed to win that. That is unreal! What? Pirates in pajamas with a very unlikely outcome as Chronic stuns the entirety of M80 and gets them back in the game. All right, so what should have been a fight win there for M80 does not go their way, and so it's gonna be Pirates in Pajamas that get another chance at this round. They can't make any mistakes though, M80 already have 99% capture progress, and they are also going to wrap around just to negate this high ground. Nicely done by Stone. No Torp here, so the Tracer can start to play a little bit more aggressively. Perhaps some audacity for taking opportunities to get these big picks on supports. Just like Lyra in that case. A long way back, Pip up to get this ground. Because I want to play from the high if they can. Especially if there's like the front of a soldier getting up there at any point, that'll be a huge problem for them. All goes deep, very deep, but Defense Matrix gets exhausted in order to give him the spacing that he needs. Yeah, but he still has to try to follow that up. Maybe with like what? a kill? That was crazy. Just fantastic little burst there from Orcs. He goes under the micro rockets. And he, she, there's no way she could have really been ready for that. Now nah, Strider's in trouble. That qualifies about his fire. Orcs more than happy to give up the mech for this. And at worst, he's created space. And Strider's not getting healed up remotely fast enough. Not without adding it on the field. So that's for so much more time for MA to flip the boat back. And they threaten to end the round here. Or could use the displacement. Hope to stop any sort of swift step from getting out of here on the boat with anyone else contesting. She's going to try for Katsuna Rush here, but can't come into it. She's too low. Getting healed up slowly, but Hawk is keeping them all busy. And M80 snatch away the win. I was not expecting that first damage to come through so quickly onto Anion. And by the time that that had happened, I'm like, was swift step available? Uh, she must have been so isolated or not have sight lines in order to actually get away. Uh, but what great recognition there from Hawk. Whether it's going to be on the Diva or the Orisa, understanding that one crucial way for you to get a fight win is just keep a support lockdown. I guess like something people don't always think of is that Kiriko is actually a little bit more uh, unsafe when playing with her team because you don't have someone in the periphery or out of the yeah. fight to swift step to. Yeah, you can Suzu everybody, but you yourself are actually at more risk if you get dove when you're playing amongst that concave of players, notwithstanding like a Lucio booping you for safety or something like that. And we know that those micro rockets up close, uh, like the, the amount of burst damage that can be applied from Diva, something that we're not often thinking about, there it's super relevant. And getting that pick also means that Strider can't get healed up quickly enough after Hawk just throws himself at the Orisa as that Fortify came off cooldown. So great game sense from Hawk there to just to identify some opportunities to slow down uh, and create a huge amount of spacing where Pirates in Pajamas don't have the ability to push back in. They can't recover quickly enough to be in the round anymore. Diva is one of Hawk's best heroes. It feels like such a breath of fresh air to really see Hawk let loose on a hero like this because we can, I don't know, get a little nostalgic about the, the good old days where we got a chance to see Hawk on Diva. Yeah, a long I mean, time ago. before exactly before two two two, you know, came in like Hawk. Obviously, back in six v six, was a uh, yeah, a huge off tank player, right? Was required on that Atlanta Rain team to really step into that that main role after a while, right? And they, you know, they attempted to sort of work with Dong Hack and get him in a position where he could be sort of substituted in. But there were many times, uh, especially like a, where where Hawk was relied on to kind of do it all. And it's no different on this particular team. And he'll show us like a, a bunch of different tanks over the course of the series, but the Diva is always one you can put your trust in. Midtown comes up next here as M80 actually opt to ban Hollywood, uh, a notorious Winston map. Uh, and uh, pirates don't want any of that Eichenwald action here. That's a smart ban. That's a really smart ban on both sides, but I think this ends up coming up a little bit bigger for M80 with the Midtown pick. You have the option to play the Orisa here. You can put Happy on the Sojourn or the Cassidy and feel really good about the sight lines that you're taking. 
Um, so I think uh, the onus is kind of on Pirates in Pajamas to really show us uh, what they're able to do. Uh, when they were able to show us the Sigma versus Shikigami, they did get the win with that Sigma composition, but it, this is a whole different beast when you look at M80 as your opponent. Absolutely. And Hawk Sigma is absolutely a comfort pick. That is where he is yeah. really feeling very strong. And the May coming up here, like, I don't know if we'll really see it out of the gates, but there's definitely some effectiveness that could be sort of generated, isolating certain individuals, just doesn't feel like really much of a happy pick. But yeah, so uh, like a, a poke composition here with Maple on the brig. I think that both teams are going to opt into this here, so a lot of that shield pressure is going to be where we set our eyes for the first sort of couple of engagements. It's going to be a mirror match on both sides, though, when it comes down to the hero selections on both teams. Uh, but you're right, yeah, it comes down to where does this Sigma Shield go? What kind of safe rotation can you make? A lot of times in the Sigma compositions, we see this so wrap around into the laundry room. If they feel like that is going to be a safe enough approach. I mean, it's a very good spot now to be as Cassidy because all of a sudden you can easily see that Sigma on the high ground and they have to play with their shield close to them. Good immortality field. That's lovely timing from Ultraviolet. What you'd expect from a player of this caliber. I mean, people are going to absolutely crumble here. Wow, that was not even close. So that's a quick first point capture. A very quick payload unlock. And that's also going to be some forward space that M80 gets to take. Uh, they're able to take this high ground control as well. I think like you're feeling really good about your opportunity to progress to the second point. Well, Happy's going to yeah. fight for an off angle again, right? I mean, he's going to try and maybe even wrap the wrap on the right side. Oh, okay. Oh, I love this. Happy the Widow pick here. Yeah, I mean, like now, you can't with confidence play the high ground if you're Pirates in Pajamas. That is a scary prospect. Well, you can even see the window he was locking down too, where he's like, I could, I could just totally suspect Tracer to be here. Like, you have to put your Sigma on the low ground here, which also means that, yeah, like if you can... Yeah, Pelican on the high ground, like it's much harder to stop the Tracer from doing whatever she wants. I like the approach though, the response is good from, from Pirates. They take a ridiculous amount of damage from that for being close though. And they have to recover from this quickly. Now with an Ant Matrix in play for Ultraviolet though, that becomes harder and harder to do. The stick though is good. Hawk's gonna be very, very low on Hawk to try and back away. The healing though came quickly enough for Hawk to turn around on stone. And happy to make it with This can't end well. Nope. Watch your back. Watch your front. Can't watch the side angles all the time either. Uh, so that sucks. So, if you're pit. Look, I mean, so much of that fight got decided by the Gravitic Flux. I think Hawk is three or four players of Pirates in Pajamas there. And they have to first react to the fact that they've been dropped in a, a strange location. They've got an immortality field. They've got to heal up very quickly. Whilst M80 is still pro like piling on that pressure. In these Pokemons, the flux is so big to decide these fight outcomes. Uh, it doesn't have it, at least for now, but I mean, the fact that he just used it, he's 60% towards another one is kind of insane. Good. Some have said occasionally, the Hawkey boy, pretty good at the game. Hawk is him. A lot of pressure being put down now, and you can see this Widow denies any sort of fanning out from Pirates in Pajamas. They have to play the stairwell, but they can't contest the cart like this. And so Pelican is getting incremental progress. That is a nerdy angle. That is extremely nerdy. <laughs> this is so good. Oh my god. What, 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 everyone, what did Maker's dream is to have a shield in front of you? Is another Flux? Strider trying to go for his in response. Hawk lapped him on Flux charge. There was no chance for Strider to get an angle to use that ultimate because he couldn't get in foe. And that high ground, he couldn't see it because he couldn't peek it. The Widow was too threatening and too lethal. And eventually, M80 get another Flux, another fight win as a result of it. It's free kills for the Widow, I guess. But this has been a drubbing so far. Uh, even though we aren't seeing kind of the typical happy pop-off from the yeah. Widowmaker, you can feel its presence. It is so palpable. Yeah. Like, you call, call it out, the pirates in pajamas, they can't peek, they can't hit the high ground, they can't look anywhere, because they're so scared to pop their heads out. Delicate in and out can drop down his own volition. By the optimal target for the pulse bomb. Perhaps the Castile wasn't it. He doesn't really pulse out a mag grenade there. 
Now he's still a looming threat. Pelicomite yeah. just run it back again. Just run circuits on him. Hawk eventually falls. The Air Matrix and Cassidy combo is a little bit too hard to react to quickly. Up. Oh, hello. Good hell. Good for Susan. All right. Mortality field rather from Anion. That's what keeps Chronic alive. Good pulse as well. Lion getting picked off now. And Pirates of Pajamas are making the right moves here in this fight. But the high ground still being controlled. Pelican bringing the Sigma down. Means Chronic is in trouble. He tries to predict the positioning of the Tracer. It's a nice little thing from Happy. This is stunning stuff from Chronic. But he's going to be overwhelmed. Oh, even Magic Mayfall just isn't enough there with the brick to stop yep. this pressure that's coming through from Happy's Widowmaker, Pelican's Tracer. Pelican's gonna have another Pulse Bomb online. And and while the Widowmaker isn't offering very much point presence, no one so can if your Pip have, have to step out into these Widowmaker sightlines. Uh, and Happy can still play the high ground now with how aggressively Pirates are pushing up. Yeah, you've got to cancel that dead eye. That third shot would have been the end of you. Orc stunned up briefly by that rally stun from Brig. Immortality from Dramani, and though comes out of the perfect time to stop the pulse bomb reprisal that was being threatened. M80, no ultimate to lean on right now, but he can save the same of the defenders. Quite a hearty exchange of those. Now it's going to come down to the individuals. He's trying to shield very, very low here, but Hawk also struggling to maintain a fighting position. And Sloan now has the high ground, but for how long? Finally, the kill comes out. It's going to be happy actually brought down by Chronic, who has to play within that danger range for Cassidy. Hawk is going to have his predict flux, though. And so we're talking about lapping an ultimate charge. You know, Hawk does have an opportunity to, to just stop a fight. Once again, these gravity fluxes have been huge, whether it's been four players canceling out other ultimates. Let's see what you can make on here. Uh, minute 45 left to go. Okay, nice flux. Ultraviolet. Oh, that's so clever. Okay, immortality field there from Ultraviolet gets him out of trouble. Did he have to throw that on higher ground? I'm not really sure. Either way, he stays alive. Here's the flux now from Hawk. The Shriek him the Strider kill. Very, very low. And again, Anion has the antidote. Beautiful response from both support players. Hawk can't get a kill there. And they also lose Ultraviolet. So now, M80 starting to run out of steam. I think this Widowmaker might have to go. I, I just like, I, especially when you take a look at how far this card has progressed, not sure you're going to quite get the sight lines that you want with the Widowmaker, and even the high ground is uh, going to be a little bit too difficult to actually find those sights. So, we are going to see Happy switch over to the Cassidy to come back into this next fight. Yeah, that experiment maybe lasted too long. Cassidy, though, know, eventually going to be the answer. Happy making a switch over, but again, we see the same combo again, that Ant Matrix Cassidy look from Pirates, a little too scary. Oh, a nice swing on that. The Matey, quick to respond. Pelican couldn't get away there. Mag grenade struck true, and Chronic was able to follow up. Big pulse as well. This is looking good now for the Pirates. 30 seconds left in the round, and M80 are short on options, and even shorter on time. <laughs> the double pulse bomb? Oh my god, that, that was great. I feel like everybody on Pirates and Pajamas just kind of woke up for this final point. Stone got a double pulse. Chronic has been able to hold their own with this Cassidy. Uh, it's just been really stellar to watch. So maybe 10 seconds left. They've got to use this window to create some space here for Ultraviolet. Yeah, it's set up happy maybe for a couple quick picks. Something that wasn't available to them when he was on the window. It makes space, at least. But can... Pirates do a little bit more than just fold back. They can afford to give some ground, in fairness. And that grenade can connect. The Flux, 49 good here. But the Immortality Field is going to come out of the prescribed time. Keep Hawk, keep fighting fit. Good accretion. That buys Hawk enough room here to at least secure the trade of Sigmas. Very, very low, though, is Liar. Has to keep that shield up now. Shield pack being given over towards Pelican. The Stone is looking healthy enough, playing from behind his own brig as well. It might be Chronic to be the difference maker here. We've got Air Matrix. That Cassidy is going to get supercharged. It's Liar falling first, and it was Stone to open up the fight. Pulse was there, but not an issue as the round had expired. M80 stopped in their tracks. Score. If you're a matey, you're pretty happy with that push, though. I, I think at the end of the day, when you look at that third point of Midtown, those defending spawns are so close. You're almost always at a disadvantage if you're the attacking team, unless you can throw five ultimates at that fight and sweep away the competition. So, uh, the fact that they got stopped there was a bit of a death sentence. But now they get a chance to see if they can uh, pull hold, maybe. No, I think you pointed out, like, the Widow Makeup was really just not getting them any traction in that last phase of the match. So you had, like, 
you have some high ground you can play, but how many times did we watch Happy having to aim vertically down <laughs> to, to make use of that position? Like pirates just they just fold back a little bit and say, okay, well we can still get the most out of our Cassidy, whereas now your widow has to play on the ground if she wants to sort of be a factor. But look, I'm not mad about it because Happy's widow was basically what decided the first, the second phase of the map. So you know you've got to take the dumps where you can find them. And maybe you should still be pleased enough with this, but this definitely throws the victor of this map into question. We know Pirates are good enough to at least get to that phase of the map. Or a lot of teams struggle with finishing, but we, we've seen them really find their footing and hold their ground admirably in their last round. They did. I think that defense, especially knowing how much time they had to work with, Pirates in pajamas did put up a valiant effort on that third point defense. We are going to see them take a very quick approach as we do see the symmetric teleporter to help get Pirates in pajamas out of spawn. But Pelicans on the Torbjorn once again, that's going to be the big difference between M80s and Pips Comp. In theory, like a rotation that lets you preserve the Sigma shield and also deny the high ground position if the attackers want to get real aggressive. But they're many are playing from there. They have like a torp set up, so they really do want to form a, a concave and fight for the point itself. This means that Pirates of Pajamas can actually make some progress into this choke if they can keep trying to stand it. But that's when things get a little hairier. That's when they get less guaranteed. Accretion's being traded, kinetic grass there. Magic mate ball. Yep, gets caught out. Nice pincer attack. You can see the off angle the Pelican is taking over my laundry, so it's a little bit more difficult for Pirates of Pajamas to actually make that rotation. Either you're going to be uh, turning your backs to all of the damage that M80 has right by that train car, or turning your back to a Torbjorn. Either way, I mean, not feeling so great. And they would not dare walk down the train against the Sigma Cop. Pirates of Pajamas, they know where their friend is, but that would be absolutely catastrophic for them. So instead, maybe a setup around this air matrix is quite still on the Cassidy here. They don't have a great fight, it's worth Oh, and a great interrupt there from Strider. I interrupt myself as he increasingly interrupts Hawks, Grimitic Flux. Now that Immortality Field is going to have to do some serious heavy lifting. And an air matrix from the high ground here for M80. It's an awkward angle though. With all the pirates playing from the choke, they deny the value of this ultimate. They deny the value, but they still are not able to get past this choke. So even the Hawk wasn't able to land a Grimitic Flux, everybody in Pip is going back to spawn. Yeah, I guess to deny the value, they had to, you know, stay in the choke and, and wait. And then when they emerged, they were still disadvantaged in that engagement. And they may have even had a sick here on a Molten Core, which, as you can imagine, would be extremely nasty if it got thrown into that choke. But the rally's also really important. There's the stun aspect that can, you know, give you an extra tool to stop this tracer. Stone already has it hard. He has to deal with, like, the, the Cassidy slow and, of course, his Torb, which has been a real nuisance. Yeah, either way, I think, like, as a Tracer, you're not feeling super great, even though you are the only Tracer in between both of these teams. It's gonna be a bit of a rotation, though, through Laundry. A couple of members of Pip are able to make that happen, but uh, you gotta be really careful, because that Sigma Shield can only last for so long, and you got a Brigitte on both sides. Oh, no. It's about to become a hot box. The big box here, Strider only sees happy, I guess, and... It's stunned up there as he hits the ground. That's why his rally stun coming into play. They're able to overwhelm Strider. Great response here from N80. We've seen how bad those Gravitic Fluxes can be for the team, subject to them. They bounce back beautifully and not off the ground. One minute remaining. Pirates in Pajamas are going to make a compositional switch with Strider going over to the Winston just briefly. Thought about it. All right, they're gonna have the Lucio instead of the Brigida, so a little bit more mobility, and it will help them to make those rotations just a bit cleaner. But they're still suffering from this problem of getting sandwiched by all. So whether it was the Molten Core or just the Torp Turret, or I guess skills as well, they gotta make these rotations faster, and they're gonna stop with this choke. This is a risky dead eye for Chronic, but he's gonna try for something. Does it stop at all? Try the Vents are getting off to the low ground. Who's in the flux? Chronic, well, he never hit the ground. And he's going to get brought down by the Dead Eye of Happy, and that is a huge blow to take, especially when there's an Ant Matrix to play with. But who's backing Hawk up here? Okay, he does have Liar coming in off to the side. There's actually a lot to work with with Happy in play, so MA should have the numbers to close this one out. Get the Sills out on comfortable two map lead. Yeah, they got grounded to a halt on the attacking side, but their defense was ironclad. M80 with two in a row.
M80. 2-0. I think a lot of people expected this, looking at this matchup, not because Riders in Pajamas are bad, per se, oh. but M80 is just so good. They are such a clean team. They are filled with so much star power. It's hard to feel like many teams can hold a candle to them. Yeah, I mean, this is like, this is not the stage of the competition where we really expect Pirates of Pajamas to be put under a, uh, rather, M8 to be put under a great deal of pressure. This is, again, us checking in on a lot of the teams coming up around them, right? Seeing, like, how are Pirates of Pajamas developed after making these couple of roster changes? Like, are they are they continuing to grow as a unit? Uh, it's it's almost just like a, a check for, you know, M8 to go, right Uh you know, you need to get out of this group to be part of the main event. It's something we expect, but we're going to be scrutinizing your play to see if there's a meta shift and you're trying to adapt to that or, or whatever. But this is, this suits them. Everything about this suits them, right? Hawk gets to play the Sigma. Ultraviolet, obviously, Nasty Baptiste player. Pelican, what more, well, I mean, what more needs to be said? Just playing the tour, absolutely <laughs> chilling. Maybe phoning it in a little bit at times, you know what I mean? Just I think back he with the has to. Uh, yep. the, the poor Happy and Pelican, you actually on their POVs can tell that they are struggling to hit some pretty easy shots. And so that's that's ping right there. Uh, not much you can do about that, except to try to lean into it a little bit. But something maybe a little bit easier. Yeah, but I, I think like all these numbers being equal, like damage mitigated and healing done, but having like, you know, a significantly large amount of damage dealt over the course of the game, it sort of really adds up. And I think that's also an advantage we saw derived by M80 while they were able to pummel Pirates of the Pajamas in that choke over and over and over again. The Sim TP came out at the start of the round and I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe Pirates could just circumvent this whole choke neutral trading plan because you're heavily disadvantaged as the, as attackers walking in with the low ground advantage having to look up to your top right like it's awkward i thought they might tp to the point itself but they still like they still go slow they don't stay on the sim which is fine it gets a poke up i get it um but maybe there's a strategy where they could try and overrun this like by using a sim tp and not having to opt into what feels like a game that really suits m80 I'm with you. I would have loved to see Pirates in Pajamas hold on to that Symmetra teleporter just a little bit longer because I think what a lot of teams struggle with in this poke war is getting through that laundry room. You don't want to walk straight forward because of the high ground pressure that you felt from the train car. Every team has to walk into that if you're going to see your opponent take that defensive hold. But going through laundry, you could also just get yourself stuck. So that's not really a great feeling either. So, yeah, with the Symmetra Teleporter, you should be able to bypass all of that, even if you wanted to, make it all the way to the back of point or even the high ground above the point. Just a little bit yeah. of a different angle there. Uh, again, when you decide you want to play a poke comp as well, like that kind of predetermines a few things for you, I suppose. It's like, hey, we feel strong in this setup. We feel like we can leverage Chronic's like Cassidy play, for example, to find an advantage. Hey, like Happy and Pelican, you know, like they're not playing Tracer right now. That means that you know, our backline maybe, you know, stands to suffer a lot less pressure, a lot less harassment, you know, with the, with the healing resources for our backline is being freed up. Maybe that allows like, you know, uh, Baptiste play to, to sort of you know, level up. Maybe there's more we can do to add to the damage in this regard. So I kind of get it. But again, like it's going to be hard to match up to that team even on, on, on your best day. Uh, after what they showed you on the attacking side with like the flanking Widow, and the fact that you did it on ping is like something we didn't even talk about what happened, but that's just kind of kind of cracked. Either way, new Queen Street. Kind of disgusting. Yeah, yeah, a little. Uh, yeah, the new Queen Street coming up here. Uh, and again, it is M80 looking to secure their, ultimately, their route out of this group with a strong showing in their first two games, basically making their lead unassailable. Other teams in this group, like Shikigami Hikari and Unk Inc., uh, again, still have to sort of fight for that number two spot to make their way through. Uh, and here we are, you know, Unk Inc. managed to take a map over M80. So that's pretty sick. They were, you know, they were able to, uh, yeah, they were to put some pressure on them uh, on that new Queen Street. So this is M80's map from yesterday that they did drop. Whenever you say Unk Inc., I can't yeah, help I but think of like Unkabunka. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, I I'm know. sure there's, I'm sure there's a reason. It oh, has to be a real. I just, oh, it's bloody 03 splash. Why are we? Okay, never mind. Why are they doing that to me? I don't Whatever. know. Whatever.
That's the name you come in with. That's the name you get. <laughs> That's what we're called. Yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be what we call you. Uh, I'm actually really glad that we don't have to say whatever <laughs> battle tag Happy is using right now. No, I drew the line of that. Yeah. yeah, everybody know that you, G, B, I'm dyslexic. I can't read that. Um, Wait a minute. Yeah. You know what? That is Happy. I bet you it was his face it name or something like that. And it like <laughs> might have you know he might have signed out with that name and it could have done something again. I'm not really sure, but it, it's kinda of funny. <laughs> Happy, fair enough, mate. You wanna be incognito? We've ruined that for you. Oh my big death. Orcs in trouble there. The Orissa is a bit of a scary prospect for the Sigma to deal with, especially on this highly contested high ground. Get knocked off the map by the jab speed. <laughs> I think you just have to be so careful if you're gonna play the Sigma Pokemon versus the Arisa because what the Arisa provides is just like straight mobility. Not only do you have the Lucio to help uh, make sure that you're able to keep that frontline super strong against the Sigma, but like the Sigma only has a shield that can go so far. I'm not sold on the Sigma on New Queen Street. Not at least against the Arisa, right? What did play this yesterday? Uh, similarly unconvinced. Having seen how that went down, so this Pokemon doesn't really have the room to, to look up to its namesake here. But Pelican is able to run through the back line and find his way to try to pick off the Orisa. Now you've got a bit more freedom here as this Sigma is liar. Ripstone back to reality. And maybe able to quickly correct course after Hawk was grabbed off of the map. Um, Pelican also back to show us that. He's not just a Torb one trick right now. He can also play the Tracer, which is really nice to have against a team that's also going to be relying on that. Stone has been really impressive with the Tracer planks that he's been able to pull off. But can he continue to like find those successes even through this Brig Shield Bash, the accretion from the Sigma? The, the mag grenade for the Cassie, if there's a tough ask here out of Stone. Alright, here's Terra Search. Four. Well, mostly unscathed coming out of that. It's not able to find Lion with a pulse pop. Alright, Pelican just caught out. There is Strider is able to find a clean finish on the Tracer. Yeah, don't love it from M80. Don't love it at all. Uh, you know, Hawk will play Orisa on a couple of maps. I'm happy to see the mirror come out here, but this Sigma setup doesn't have the room that they needed to have. They might be like practicing. They might be practicing comps that they intend to implement on Pelican and Happy or off, off ping and just want to like prepare properly. I I would, because at this point, you know, the Pelican and Happy, they're all going to be off ping ready to soon. This um, yeah, I think you still have to be sure that you like know how to cycle those cooldowns, whether or not they work out currently. Chronic is zero of those rail guns. Not the first five. Great pressure coming down. A good chunk of damage there. They may have to remedy. Oh, wait, do they? No. Did they get the checkpoint and miss that? No. Uh, no. No, just barely not. I think. I heard, I heard any sound that sounded like a chime, but looks like they're able to avert that potential situation. Now they can shoot. So, no one is going to challenge the, the Sigma up there. They're all trying to provide a staging ground here. Probably for Happy to try and set up as the box starts to move back. Do you have a dead eye coming through from Happy? Uh, maybe able to use that to just kind of bully away the pirates in pajamas? Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Ah, uh, but he creates space, so all good, right? Happy pops it in I Pirates in pajamas here. Yeah, they can't challenge that, that's fine. This is such slow going for M80. It is glacial progress to try and at least get back to parity here. Yeah, Matrix though, that was the real threat, not the dead eye. Oh, sorry? Stone just materialized where Happy's fist happened to be. And got punched from the future. Yeah, I think that they call that an interdimensional swing. Mm, I like that. Yeah. yeah it's, got, it's got a ring to it. I, I like it, yeah. I mean, that's the new collab from Overwatch 2. Sneak peek. Space adventure. That's not Cowboy Bebop. Space Force? Um, <laughs> I'll be waiting for that collab. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh dear. Hey, mate, back up here. 
just out towards the side of this little bend. Because I know that the Arisa can get up on them awful quick. No, okay. I don't want to hear about anymore. I don't hear about it. This guy basically has line speed connection. What a stick with a pulse bomb from Pelican. Terraso slow, at least clearing out some of this defensive infrastructure. And happy falls. Magic Mate Ball has good timing here with the sound barrier. Trying to keep Strider in the fire. But even though Ocean gets stripped from him awfully quickly, he got ultraviolet though. The fact is healing. Oh, they did. They did. See, it's they both 57.18, right? That's why I got so confused. But anyway, he gets that checkpoint. Snuck it in midway through the fight. They, yeah, they, they got the checkpoint, a and it's so sad because Perito and Pajamas were there. They were there, but they had taken the fight elsewhere. Uh, something that the power of the Sigma from Hawk really can provide. Um, yeah, and this is just back to square one uh, for both of these teams. If we start to fight over the midpoint, there's one ultimate online that's going to be chronic with the overclock. But I feel like M80 have not had a chance to breathe here. Trider? Trider? Oh goodness, that's a big overextension. No, Susie was Chronic great. Yeah, Chronic hoping to intervene here with his overclock, but there's no way he's going to get Remotely enough to cover over that loss of the Orisa. Pirates of Pajamas really held their own at the start of this map. In fact, they were leading at some points, but these last couple of fights have been a couple of sloppy moments. They allowed M80 to waltz, not crawl, waltz back in the lead. Trina just gets away. The javelin spin by him the space to try and avoid Happy's pressure. But again, the Arisa gets picked off first. This is uncharacteristic based from on what we've seen so far in this map. Pirates and Pajamas have to shape up quickly. They're running out of time. They're running out of time in meterage. I mean, with three minutes left, uh, there isn't too big of a gap right now between these two teams. I think that Pip can really get themselves back into it. But Soul's gonna hit these shots. We've gotta see Strider just walking forward. Pulse dropped in there. Stone able to take down Happy, but Happy was not the intended target. I'm not sure of that. Immortality kills from Ultraviolet getting picked off first was crucial, though. The Terror Surge did its job. I like the timing from Strider there to make sure there was no immortality by the pulse detonation. Now we're gonna have a pushback. Ooh. Well, I think it's still gonna come up. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you have the terror search now, so like you can you can turn the pressure on. Adi and barely got away there. So like, knocked back by the javelin. With two minutes and twenty seconds left to play with here, some individual moments from pirates, but that's not enough. On the whole, their media are absolutely Hello. dominating. They've got a big meter ridge lead, like okay. over twenty, Hi. and that checkpoint, of course, which is really got to be crucial. Hello. That's just so oppressive to play into you're trying to make a comeback in overtime you don't even have that first checkpoint it's like man yeah. how on earth are we going to win enough fights they're in a row to do this hours. but they have oh, too much to play off here both support ultimates in fact they're gonna have to leverage them about now uh, it's gonna have to be now or never that is you're right like this is starting to get out of hand especially with those close spawns that m80 get a chance to take advantage of a uh, huge huge advantage for these last couple of moments Pelican with a pulse, knowing, of course, that Suzu needs to be taken out of the pitch before he can guarantee a kill with that ability. Or simply use it to force the Suzu himself. Let the Kitsune guide you! I mean, they've noticed that the Hawk is slow. They're going to try and push into this now. Strider, they're going to be knocked back by the Javelin. Hawk makes enough space for himself and now plays from behind the air matrix. M80, defensive, curling up for a moment. They're going to have to use an immortality field in stone. Isn't able to pick it off in time. It doesn't matter, though, because the rest of the Pirates are here. They do spend both their support ultimates, but the upside is they force Lion apart with his own sound barrier. They had a dominant fight win. I don't think you hate that, though, if you're M80, because you've stalled enough that there's only a minute left. Yes, Pirates and Pachamas are going to be able to get this checkpoint finally. It would be like a point zero zero five meter away for being able to capture it before. Also, they did have it, right? I guess the follow because the follow were down by the time that the bot got there. So I think they just got it and got stopped on the other side. Doesn't matter here, because Pirates might be suddenly equal this meter in total in general. They're popping off right now. Magic Maple, a quick little double here. And this is Gary for M80. Under 30 seconds left. Pirates threaten to equal and exceed that meter is tally. M80 have got to go now. Oh, they've got to go now. They have to stop this because it's going to be a very difficult to do that once Pirates and Pajamas have taken control. It's a really quick stagger though. They've got a lead though, 78.91 to 79.62, M80 still have that edge. Walk now going to throw himself in there. A 
tag. Terra Surge doesn't find too much. And Pelican gets picked up by a good eye of all things. Granny and what a huge pick to find at this moment. And M80 have again conceded mid Queen Street. Two days in a row as Pirates in Pajamas stay alive in the series. All right, well, that first checkpoint was very impactful for both teams. Honestly, I mean, the, I'm blind. I, I totally missed that they had that first checkpoint. It really looked like they didn't. It was, it was very close. I think I heard it. I think I heard it happen midway through the fight. So both teams actually kind of seen eye the checkpoint uh, quietly amidst all of the action there. <laughs> so it didn't matter, yeah. I mean, if there isn't a checkpoint matter. and you have to wait, then we don't see this like reckless push from M80. They actually have time to set up and have a proper fight there. So Pirates, they, they kind of paved the way for success right at the start of the round. No, it looks great for them. And I think when you look at how scrappy a lot of those fights were, I would be a little bit worried if I were M80 taking a look at a map like Suravasa uh, for the next one. Because can you play the Torb? Like, like, do you feel confident being able to play the Tracer? I don't know how good M80 are feeling with their odds of having to play a lot of these like higher mechanically skilled heroes. This might, be, yeah, look, this might be about as exploitable as M80 are ever going to be. So if you're pirates, you see that blood in the water, yeah, you know that this might be the time to strike. This would be massive for them. I mean, in, in terms of like how their seating is going to be set up for, you know, the main event, and that stuff really, really matters. But look, just a generally very strong showing on this map. I thought Stone was really good. And Ian finds such an important pick in that last fight. So she, she opens up with a, with a kunai headshot kill. Hawk is terror searching, like kind of off the point. It doesn't find any value. M80 are, they're, they're desperate. They've run, they've run out of time here. And it's hard, this is hard to do what Pyrus just did. Like they stay in control over the map, mentally speaking, right? And even when they fall behind, they know they have a checkpoint. They know they can play off that. They just need a good fight. And they manage to find it at the perfect time. Super good positioning. Really heads up play as well to just kind of keep their cool. I do think something that M80 struggled with is playing the Sigma comp. It was too slow. It was taking so long to get this comp position set up or to have a happy and pelican on the right angles in order to take advantage of that Sigma shield. And by the time we ended up seeing Hawk actually switch over to the Orisa, I felt like it was a little too late uh, being able to actually get that ultimate rotation and find the meteorage advantage. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I mean, like, the Sigma objectively is just, like, isn't, it's not good in that matchup, right? There's just, like, no way you can keep your shield up for any length of time. It just gets chewed to pieces immediately. So you don't want to be, like, rotating your cooldowns every single time you see the Orisa and having to, like, kinetic grasp and just have her look at you funny while you get no value out of it. It's, like, really easy to, to punish that Sigma all the time. Uh, and if you have good enough mobility, then you can just pound their backline over and over. So we know why Hawk had to switch Hawk on Orisa. It's fine. But that, that hero pool of Hawks is something we talked up a lot when it came to the D.Va. We talk up a little less when it comes to maybe like Orisa games that look like that, where he kind of struggles to, to find like a clear advantage, uh, you know, and and the, playing the Sigma here at the start of New Queen Street was, just wasn't a great look. Suravasa, I think you can play Winston at some points. Uh, I don't know if that's really the best. Like a lot of time we also see the, the Orisa involved here as well. So I don't know if this map necessarily plays into Hawk's best tank heroes. It's going to be something to keep an eye on here. We don't want to be letting this one go all the way. I think they did They did play Suravasa yesterday. They right? did. And they did win, but it was a 3-2 oh, versus okay. Unk. Uh, so Unking. what? Yep. <laughs> to, to Unk Incorporated. Um, but yeah, it was it was a 3-2. Played with the Orisa composition with like Tracer, Soldier, and Kiriko, Musio. And after a certain amount of time, Hawk did switch over to the Winston, which was able to close out that map for them. But if it's the Winston, then I ponder, why not the Doomfist, which is a hero that Hawk is very good at. I think like it's it's fine here. I think like trying to deal with Orisa with Fortify up is really ah. punishing for Doom. If you actually if you punch into it, she's Fortify, you might be in trouble. Uh, getting getting caught out there would be pretty bad, and it's pretty easy to interrupt you with that javelin. Now, why is Winston better? It's kind of a good question, right? I think like Primal Rage offers you some unique opportunities on certain flash points, but I would expect players to trend more towards Doom in that case. Here we are. We have the Sigma. Now these points, like you have more pitched battles at the start of these flashpoints, so maybe there's a chance to 
to be aggressive with this poke set up, but eventually, uh, the Orisa is going to step up and demand your attention. The Orisa just collapses on you, and that's the big problem about the Sigma Shield, is you want to be able to play around it, and just be able to use that as just an extra bit of sustain, but it's down already. Like... Yeah, I mean, I think... He hit a big accretion uh, just now on Strider. That was big and, and didn't really allow Orisa to command any space for that short window. I think Magic Mabel just gets pounded from across the map here. If your Sojourn play is sick, then hello, hello. it won't really matter what the tank hello. matchup is. Like, it's going to be up to Happy here to, to, to find these rail connections and punish. Because Chronic doesn't have a shield to play from behind. No, and, and so now you you have to just play around the natural architecture of the map, which is not always the easiest thing to do. You're still vulnerable, especially if your back is turned and Pelican is looking at you. It can be tough to actually find the angle that you want to have. Uh, and similarly, if you have the signal shield that you are playing around, uh, you have to also try to find a way to hit past it. Nice. That's huge. Oh man, this might already be over. Pirates have to back away here. Now, they're not going to give it up entirely, but... In the back of their heads, they're thinking, oh, we made it. Just it. I mean, the poke off not great at chasing these kills, right? But they'll get some free ult charge. I mean, they're basically putting it at a, at a point here where, yeah, you get some free ult charge. Happy gets to walk away with the overclock by the time that Pirates of Pajamas have rotated around. Uh, so, uh, this is not a fun experience for Pip to have to walk into. Oh, come on. And Stone is dead. Okay, so we have a we have a gap here, I think, as both DPS rolls in this early phase of the map. It's definitely getting, getting sort of pretty nasty, I think, at the start of these fights. We see some great railguns from Happy. Pelican's able to constantly brazenly take that 1v1 and win it out. We did see a flip back by Pirates of Pajamas, though, which is the reason why we're still here. But that's about to be rectified. All right, well, that's going to be flashpoint number one heading to M80, and now the onus is on them to figure out how they want to set up for the next one. And they have so many ultimates to work with here, too. Like, the, the fact that they have the sound barrier online, it just feels really nice to have against something like the Terra Surge. Yes, you have the Suzu as well, but it feels like a nice extra fail-safe to have in a matchup like that. The big difference here is going to be the accretion and the grenade blocks versus some of the Terra Surge. Both of these tanks have to play so differently around these alts. I mean, I, the flux was devastating on Midtown every time Hawk played, like Hawk used it. And here it's similarly powerful, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than you know, having a group up to play on a flashpoint like this and just getting caught inside that. Pelican goes down, Stone eventually is able to win out the Tracer 1v1 and Chronic is going to keep M80's hits done. Okay, here's the flux though. Sound Barrett comes out of response. So Hawk basically making an exchange of ultimates there and he has to have expected this outcome. What's nice though about the Gravitic Flux getting used is you did get out the sound barrier. Yeah. Uh, I think there's not a better way for you to have at least released that ultimate from the pockets of Pip. Uh, you also are going to change as well. So I think a good recognition there by Hawk to identify that the wrist is just going to have a bit better of a time on these smaller flashpoints. I mean, uh, tiny. It is. It, there's not a lot of room there, and also, like, this is a good time to switch to a tank that can really benefit from sound barrier, because you have a beat advantage in this fight. Wait a minute, already looks like they're starting to lose that one. Strider now has to go for the Terra Surge to salvage this. It might not be enough either. Pelican is able to bring the Brace and Orisa down. But Stone... Yeah, okay, finally, I think the Kiriko is, is pretty important now. Stone will linger, because he kind of has to. But they may aren't in a position to flip this with three, and it'll just be Pelican sent ahead. Right, well, I, you gotta take, <laughs> you gotta get the flashpoint now before it flips over. <laughs> that would have been like the biggest bag fumble I think we've seen in uh, OWCS. Uh, so glad we did that. And maybe also have a chance to come back into this one as a team of five to play around that sound barrier advantage. But they didn't need it in that first fight. It almost feels better to have it now. Yeah, I want to see a proactive beat here from Liar. Push into the entirety of Pirates with the Kikan. Magic Maple is very low. Okay, we're going to start with the Kitsune Rush, which is fine. It's going to draw that out of Annie as well. Good pressure Happy putting down on Magic Maple, and here's the beat to follow it up. So, like, it's just you have no excuse losing this fight. It cannot happen, or rather should not. Stone, though, hard to catch. Playing inside the Disruptor Shop for a time here. Eventually, MA will maintain control, and they keep big ultimates to potentially close this flashpoint entirely. So, they go from zero to hero here on Temple. No, it's amazing. I, and this is kind of what you are hoping to see from a team like M80. Uh, also a big turnaround from what we ended up seeing on New Queen Street. Uh, but 
Here we go. A couple of percentages left. Uh, Pepper gonna come back in and try to really test this. But with what? Well, uh, with no Lucio, that's for sure. And that was the beat that they were supposed to be able to contest with. That was the one shining spot that they were gonna be able to leverage. Should have a decent chance in this fight. Now that's off the table. Pelican is removed, though, with a boss from still in hand. A brief opening here, and if Happy takes another of those, this one could go the other way. Chronic now with a sound barrier. Magic Bay more quickly gets back into the fight. I love this. Those pajamas play safe. They stay in the fight, but they're gonna have the flashpoint because Magic Bay more gets there in time. Because they bought enough time for the Lucio to arrive with beat in tow. Wow, I, he didn't even have beat, actually, when they and were engaging. He just barely missed it and got it when he died. Brutal. Uh, so, I honestly, maybe a bit of a blessing, no? Because then you had it to actually come in and finish out that flashpoint when the cards fell so stacked against you after losing Mayfall so early. And so it's all tied up. Going over to the next flashpoint, I'm really looking at M80 to see if they can turn the tide with this Arisa composition. The Arisa versus, versus Arisa has looked to be in Strider's favor as of right now, and we're going over to yet another tiny flashpoint. Walk in, wang in the corner. This makes it a little bit hard to poke him down from all of these little hiding holes that the first point features. Also recall there on Stone, it ends up being quite close by. Stone wasn't overly mobile before Hawk turned up, but we didn't even see any of Hawk's teammates there. They were not really within their vicinity. Pirates of Pajamas look to be honestly a little better when it comes to this Orisa composition. They have. Uh, whether or not it's been Strider creating more space, I think Chronic as well has really been able to get the better of some of this backline of the matey and really opening things up for Pip to play a bit more aggressive. I think, uh, too, to Annie's credit, she's been doing a great job of keeping this team healed up while also making sure that uh, you have the Suzu online for those critical moments. 41% in counting. That's just a huge buffer build up. That Let one fight win. Ultraviolet, we're gonna have to go for it here. Get to their rush to point. They kind of zero in on Strider at the start of that fight. Who's had to use his fortify awfully early. And Asusu just got thrown on Pirates' as Arisa. Pelican there. No, no, it takes a railgun. Has to recall. Can't really keep that pressure going. But M80 use that opening to at least cut the point in their favor. And now they get to play from that ultimate advantage too. No, 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 no,
So M80 still have a fighting chance here, but it's just poor. Like a gentle oh, this is dangerous now. Pyrus could look to try and end the map here. Oh, yeah. can't even flip the point into his team's favor. Liar has to get him back into the action quickly. He needs to back away because he doesn't have enough to If he goes down there, then I think the whole team is screwed. Uh, so go into overtime here with a little bit more reinforcement. They do get the point back, and like this is where Pip recognizes they have to back up because they have a chance to just close out the map in this next fight. Sound barrier advantage. They've got the Terra Surge. The only thing they have to really worry about here is Pelican's Pulse Bomb. Man, the composure it takes to know you're on the precipice of beating a team like M80 and back off the point. Give it up voluntarily, set up, and you know you have, you know, a couple of fights to really make this work. Man, taking them to a map fire would be absolutely unreal for Pirates in Pajamas. But we are seeing some of M80's weaknesses exploited. Let's see just how hard Pirates in Pajamas can press down on that. We have a possible here for Pelican. Both teams have a sound barrier, so the match will come down to the timing and execution of those. Pelican, okay, they're gonna draw a Suzu out. He's probably happy enough with that here, even if not getting the kill on Strider. There is a Terra Surge to worry about, Strider's gonna go through it right now. Ultra Bar is able to step away, but happy gets wrecked by Chronic. Now was that overclock I was talking about. Stunned up in midair, but still has a couple of these whales to deploy. And there's no targets, because Annie deals with Hawk. M80, are screwed. Pirates in pajamas. Absolutely dominant here, and this is a Risa Mira after forcing the switch off the Sigma. They're gonna take us to a map five. Ooh, those the plot thickens. No way. A map five between these two teams. I think when you look at this matchup, everyone's like, oh, M80. Like, I would love to know what the chat predictions for this one. Because I think it's like, oh, I think M80 wins a 3 0, 3 1. But. A five map series? This has been a banger. I think yeah. Pirates and Pajamas have earned it I over and over. A brief look at what went down yesterday though, like with a very similar map pool, uh, you know, between Unk Inc. And, and this M80 team probably might have made us reconsider just how simple, how straightforward this would have been. Now they did win two of us in that matchup, but like it, it wasn't close and I don't know if the, the play necessarily was very convincing in the Orisa composition. I guess the upside being Junker Town does offer a pretty decent place to bring your Sigma comps back into the fray, right? You can play that poke style if you want. It's also quite hard to exploit that in many parts of this map. Teams have tried to play like that hard dive look, but I think right now that's hard to make happen. So there might be, a, you know, there might be avoiding execution M80 here by being able to go back to what has worked for them so far. But man, let's let's talk a little bit of, uh, you know, about this Pirates in Pajamas team because this is a great result already. And I mean, the play with the Arisa comp is super clean it's been super super good and i think it's a really nice moment to to kind of give a couple more credits to the players that are on pirates in pajamas you know Anian, she was a player for the new york excelsior during her time in the overwatch league she gets picked up by this roster to help come in and play this kiriko it's looked so smooth today and this is not uh we didn't get a chance to see her too often in their matchup yesterday. It, it was Anian and then Divinity came in to play a couple of those maps. Um, and Maple as well, I think just on the Lucio has been stellar. This is a player that I feel like has been kind of on the up and up in the tier two scene. And it's nice to see them have a great pop-off performance here. Hey, it like, seems like a great shell of a team to, to fit into here. You know, like the, I think the coordination has been fantastic, the beat timing as well, especially when it comes to keeping Strider in these in these particular fights. I think it's been crucial. Uh, the, the Orisa battle has been extremely chaotic, but generally, Pirates in Pajamas have just looked better there. Hawk seems to be constantly giving ground, constantly being forced to use his defensive cooldowns earlier than he otherwise would like. And even something as pedestrian as like the Terra Surge timing and usage has looked really good. So that comp, now we know Pirates in Pajamas, very good there. The better team on that comp, undeniably. They can't really get away with that on a map like Junker Town. It's so vertical. The sightlines are so wide. They're gonna have to go, you know, potentially into a Sigma Mirror or something that they could sort of maybe you know, play to the topography a little bit more with. Either way, those questions and many more I'm sure will be answered after we come back from this break with Map 5 on the line. Begin the excavation log. Slow and Cameron here on side to Petra. Me and the Wayfinders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever... Again? Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with 
these artifacts, you gotta go through me. Hey, I'm on to you. I gotta tell you, I wanna scream it out. Ah. Hey, I'm gonna show you. Here's what it's all about. That's right, folks. That's what we have to look forward to on April 16th. And of course, we're all wondering what the implications for competitive play might be with Ventures Edition to the game. But for now, we turn our attention to this fifth and final map in a series that has gone in a direction we definitely didn't expect. M80, we're off to a strong start here. The Pirates in Pajamas have slowly wrested control back. New Queen Street, then Suravasa. Maps that we knew that M80 were a little shaky on, they ended up dropping to this upstar squad. And now that 2-0 title is on the line coming out of this Group C. It's amazing that Pirates in Pajamas could reverse sweep a team that is considered top three in the entire NA region. Isn't that something? Uh, like, not to, not to knock Pirates in Pajamas' skill, but it's just that we have seen in NA these top four teams of M80, what? Luminosity, Attackers. Timeless, and Toronto Defiant just be such a it's cut above everybody pain. else when it comes to the power level and the power rankings that you see for the region that it just it feels so unprecedented taking a look at a team like this. But it's, we're getting our answer, I think, to how Pip are going to handle the Sigma composition. And um, that's with maybe a bit of a look into the future crystal I mean, ball wild. of the next patch it's it's this is wild i mean the record ball creates a huge amount of space here chronic is still gonna have to you know win the 1v1s here it gets happy which what we saw in the previous map that's very much within the realm of possibility frustrating for hawk who won't really know where to put himself look knock down into the open there trying to be very disruptive you don't have a somber you don't have a zenyatta here to deal with this record ball so strider will be really hard to stop and he got so low there, and you see how his health bar magically increased all the way back to full. Uh, that's imp uh, that's impressive. Uh, Anion and Maple are really putting in the legwork here to make sure that that Wrecking Ball can stay alive. Oh, great immortality build though from Ultraviolet, really holding it together here. Pirates of Pajamas for all the flair. The question is this compass. They haven't really found enough of these eliminations. It's raw kills to get to this choke. So M80, despite looking a little bit shaky, have been able to hold their ground for now. And then, again, they're predicting some of these angles from Strider quite well. But you can see it's evident. This comp is very good against this more static, grouped up, sort of set up from M80 that wants to keep you at arm's length. The Widow versus Widow duel, though. It'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Because typically when we, we look at just Widowmakers and their proficiency, I think Pappy's up there as we top three in North America. Um, but Chronic, kind of a bit more of an unknown factor. See how it works. Alright, once more. A ball ran right to the back line there for Strider. This time, the nano boost to Adity. Stunned up briefly, taking basically zero damage. And the fighter grenade from Adity really, really facilitates for that play to happen. There's going to be more than enough for Strider to roll over the top of M80. Do you have a chance to make a switch if you want to? Because it might not be an option. Or might hope that he can catch the wrecking ball in this Gravitic Flux. <laughs> oh, Strider's just rolling strikes left and right. And Pelican goes back to spawn. The cart is going to be basically towards the end of the checkpoint by the time that Pelican comes back. Happy's dead. Yeah, the Wrecking Ball again. Victim of the Hammond. Striker. 770 
fast HP. Still pretty insane. And the fact that he's able to do that in more ways just, I don't know, that's just not reasonable. This is not reasonable at all. Pirates of Pajamas now, 3 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. M80 are scrambling. They have no idea what to do. How do they respond to this? Cassidy grenade slows the ball down. That, okay, then they're going to give it a go here, but by no means a uh, convincing switch up to handle this comp. And then going back. Yeah. Yeah, I, like this This is what, it's just gonna be rock, paper, scissors here. What Pip want is to be able to play this Arisa composition. But they've forced M80 off of some of their best choices to be able to handle that first point. Widowmaker is gone. You don't have to deal with the happy Widowmaker anymore. And wow, you feel pretty good, I think, if you're Strider playing into this Arisa versus Sigma. It's worked out so many times already, forcing Hawk to play the Arisa, and you feel good about that 1v1 also. Yeah, look at all that, like, look at the pressure the Hawk's under. I mean, he's virtually on the wrong side of the map here, as Pirates can play a Death Ball, and that can take the round of approach that exposes them the least to any of this poke damage, which is keep the high ground, keep the car moving, and maybe they're in shambles. This is not looking great for them. Nobody. I don't think they count anybody. I think maybe Strider got coined that and then was Suzu'd immediately and, and killed back up. So that's that's very telling. The tools that they may have are really getting them the result they need. Hawk and the creation, but it's a wild one. And they're not, they are they're on not tilt. The cart. They're on tilt. They give up another checkpoint, bros. This is getting out of hand real quick. They didn't even touch the cart. That is true. They didn't touch. <laughs> Nope. Oh, there's somebody stuck. Pelican is stuck. What if I watch you? What is What is actually happening here? I, I you're watching M80 coming. crumble. Is yes. is what's happening? And it's nothing cheesy now, right? They've just gone back to the comp that's worked for them so well over the last couple of maps, and M80 have no choice but to match this. There aren't any good opportunities to get Sigma value here. The high ground. Isn't that accessible for defenders, or at least it's no more accessible than it is for Pirates of Pajamas. So Hawkdown needs to match on this Arisa. He needs to hope that they are more coordinated than their own Suravasa. Then I find a little bit of breathing room, some chance to and sort of contemplate how to fight the way out of this situation. The Lion has got bonus for the Reigns. Man, this feels like Pirates of Pajamas are meant to win this man. They look insane. They look like they have protected a president that isn't a bastion. In this case, it, it might just be the, uh, the horse. I think the horse is in the Okay, horse is in the what? That's fine. Uh, I've seen crazy pop lines. For example, Price Pajamas beating him That would be crazy than an equine president. Pulse bomb drop there, no connection, and finally Happy's able to find a couple here, but Hawk needs to move out. He's lower HP and Happy's under extreme pressure, gets him up by a mag grenade, and just one shot for Chronic would be enough. The dance is dastardly for Happy, but eventually he'll be brought down, and mm, two minutes and eight seconds on the clock. Those are grim tidings for M80. That is almost a speed run. They didn't get stopped on second. The cart barely got stopped on third. I don't, hmm. I don't like this. I mean, <laughs> I look, I mean, I guess like seeing the Wrecking Ball out of the gates, like it maybe shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Uh, it's really good against those Sigma compositions because, yeah. you know, it's so predicated on just being able to stand where you want to and not be shifted and just be a bulwark for your, your, your poke heroes. So Pirates in Pajamas don't respect this. I also think getting to see Arian on the Ana is great. One of her, definitely one of her best heroes. I think we even, you know, like, we, we saw hyping that up a lot during to the that was the match she won. Era. Yep. And MYXL. That's right. But like, we, we definitely we definitely hyped it up a lot in that era. But you saw, like, that, that fight with Strider gets Nano, and then Anigun hits, like, a really nice two-player body grenade. Like, it's just so easy for the Wrecking Ball from that point on to just mm -hmm. roll on up take two quick kills, but even in like a 1v1 sense, trying to just like pile drivers down on, on Happy who's playing Widow. Happy doesn't really have the support from Hawk who's playing across the map by necessity. Like, they completely counted this M80 comp, but now they forced M80 onto a less comfortable Attack setup in order to in hang. And they're wicked defense? Stop. 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 Oh, okay. That's kind of wild. It's wacko, but it could work. There's no, there's no switches coming out here from M80. Ah, uh, wait, Hawk. Pause. 
Hawk walk back. Hawk plays D.Va. Okay, right. Okay, I like this. I like this. Hawk D.Va, me happy. Yeah, look, hey, better access to some of this high ground and also you can interfere a little bit more with Wrecking Ball's party just by moving into it. Defense Matrix also gives you a couple of windows, but you are in a Cassidy versus Miro matchup. Uh, Widow matchup, excuse me. So trying to secure side lines for Happy is something that Hawk has to be constantly aware of. And you see that Defense Matrix getting thrown across the cart. So he's trying to do that now, but you see now he leaves. Okay. Is he Pelican? That was him now. Yeah, he, he wrapped around the entire back of the point. Extra yeah, he did work until he didn't. I will say that. Uh, but it was really cool to see him just kind of walk towards Pip's spawn and then come out to have that pincer dive with Hawk's D.Va. But uh, I think the same problem remains as what you were saying, is that Hawk is the kind of the sole diver onto the Widowmaker unless Pelican can get in a position and coordinate with that, which is going to be very difficult to do. No, yeah, kind, of, kind of awkward as well because I no think like, Hawk doubles shot. back. No, he, he dives in just as M.A.D. are getting hit by the Wrecking Ball uh, and the Tracer play from Pirates. So both teams are diving top at the same time. So there's no appeal. It's super volatile and hard to predict how that plays out. And Pirates just end up kind of winning that little engagement. Trying to still putting a lot of pressure here. Now down on Happy. He's going to have to take a moment though back away. It gets a little low. That car, that's not leaving the choke anytime soon. No, it's not. We're gonna hear what Pip, though, is, is kind of thinking about as they try to think about how to keep this cart stopped. Diva, 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 Nana Zen out. I think Nana Zen. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Come under, come under. I have first touch. I have first touch. I have time. Yeah, first touch. What a pink to the left. What a pink to the left. Keep it close. They're looking at me. Yes, base, yes, base. Push support on me. No, I'm going to try behind the wall. You know what I mean? Train, train, train. Give me the new. That's another team. Fighting, sir. On a point, on a point, on a point. On a car, on a point, on a point. I'm mine, so I can switch. Okay, okay. Two pinks. I'm just going to go. Okay. Straight there. Wait, wait, wait. Don't stagger, don't stagger. We can get out here. We can get out here. I'm popping one. No. Okay, you. That fight definitely not going the way that Pirates of Pajamas would have liked it to. But again, when you have to defend on this part of the map, Rose, like it's much scarier to play against an attacking Widow. It's very difficult to do that. I think as Wrecking Ball 2, you just don't nearly have as much point presence on that particular portion of point one. So, Pip are already going to make the adjustment to put Strider back onto the Arissa that has been so potent for them. And it feels nice that Union was able to hold onto that nano boost as well. While you heard that they wanted to call out, maybe give it over to the Zen, make sure you've got the Transcendence. One of two very valuable supportive ultimates that are now online for pretty treacherous second point. Happy, you has a feeling at least that is being pursued through some of those tunnels. Retreats up to the high ground, so isn't much of a factor in this fight right now. That's a transcendence from Maple. He's put to sleep after the invulnerability phase is over, and he will be dispatched. In the corner, Chronic is stuck, and Hawk is going to be more than happy to take care of the Gunslinger. Okay, the pulse here. Just trying to low it up, and there's actually a lot of value in Pelican. Sticking that beautiful. Absolutely nails Strider. That was gorgeous. And now the Tracer has no choice in the to step out into the loving arms of the uh, Hawks Diva. And so, good stuff from M80 to really try to turn this around, but the clock's against them, Mitch. People were able to finish with two minutes and eight seconds, and at no M80, one they, they're kind of working to, to try to match that and just have enough time bank to get through, hopefully, a third round. Yeah, I mean, like, the point is, though, like, this diva composition is is working out. Like, even against this Orisa look, which, if you can see Hawk can't really take, like, a toe-to-toe -to -toe fire with Strider on so many occasions, and he's under a lot of pressure constantly health-wise, having to rely on Ultraviolet and Lyra to keep him in there most of the time is important. There it is. That's what you need to see. Stone brought down with a headshot. He might be in trouble, though. There's a scary matchup for even the most seasoned of Widows. Magic Maple does prevail. Can't get to that second checkpoint. Uh, it was a valiant effort there by Magic Game Ball's Lucio, but ultimately the rest of the fight was happening on the point, and they were just able to take down that defense very quickly. Uh, so now, hey, you know what? It's not a bad time pace. They've got almost three minutes heading into this third objective. They are continuing to keep this car steadily moving forward. What this D.Va has on this Marissa is this high ground presence. I mean, 
enough to comfortably have ultimates online and so that's something that i think you you're really excited about having as an advantage but m80 played with so much momentum they just came out of the gate swinging with something like the diva right away mm, i don't know if pip can, can feel good about just immediately locking in the wrecking ball right you feel like it's a pretty big risk to take when m80 could come out of literally anything Probably doesn't do them any favors when they're going up against an Orisa comp, but maybe they feel like they have the, the room to switch to mirror that. But Hawk will be on the Diva still, potentially. I don't know. Charger's thinking. Yeah, I didn't forget the time. <laughs> Heroes to mix with it. So the safest pick here for Strider is the Orisa, and that's where Pirates of Pajamas go. Well, the Orisa, too, when you think about it, if you like lock in the Wrecking Ball, and then you, let's say you have to switch over to the Orisa on that second point, you're giving them all the ultimate charge as well. Uh, so I think it just does feel better to at least have a, a, a known factor that you might be able to get the Terror Surge online. And Strider has been really clean with those when he's been able to actually land them onto the team. The difference is that Diva's not so easy to lock down. Neither are any of these heroes that do have the ability or play away from the team. So as we see these spawn doors open for the attacking side, Happy's looking for the opportunity to maybe catch Chronic off guard with some sort of grapple shot and just get some scouting information to the team. Yeah, obviously just like the mere presence of the Widow makes it a little scary to push out into that cul-de-sac just in front of the first checkpoint. Okay, so we... Oh, interesting. Like, obviously, it can be hard for the Baptiste here to heal in this together. the Diva consistently, but Ultraviolet doesn't want to play Arna here. Baptiste is nice because you do have the opportunity to have the Immortality Field. If you're going to go against a few tiers, though, then you want to make sure that you at least have, like, the Immortality Field. Even the Amplification Matrix on attack is a great engagement mechanism. Pelican, very wary of the Widow. That's hunting! But apparently, the hunting becomes the hunter. Looking at a good amount of damage, can't quite complete the one clip here. Horses, a uh, defensive probe on the right hand side from Pirates of Pajamas. Product now definitely starting to feel the pressure a little more. Taking more defensive position on this high ground, but as he has his head turned, it's trying to go down. Still want to pick. Getting the Baptiste there is huge. Here comes Happy sliding on in and gets brought down by the SMG mode. Pirates of Pajamas now in a position to hold this. They might actually be making this happen. Pelican triple blinks across the point, and Chronic's just waiting for the Tracer to emerge. And so he does, but it's Strider that's there to meet Pelican. And the Pirates are taking this one all the way to the bank. And all they're going to do now is exceed that push. Oh, it's more than doable. I might even say it's likely. I think this is winnable. Pirates of Pajamas, they, they did the hard work. The hard work would be trying to get a full hold on Junker Town. How many times have we seen that in rarely. play? Pretty, pretty rarely, honestly. It requires, yeah. and we don't really see it in teams where like one team is utterly dominant. That being said, there's like, it's overtime, there's less time to like fix your comp and make your push here, but 
You know, Pirates had the chance. They switched over to a Wrecking Ball probably just for the speed to come back. That one shot goes. Chronic smashing Ultraviolet there on some kind of wild flick towards the cart. I feel like that tilts things in their favor hugely. You remove such a huge source of healing. The immortality field is off the table. All the burst healing from the regenerative shot is just, it, it's all gone. And so if you don't have that, I, I feel like the, you know, the cards fall so fast, even though Strider is out of the picture. Uh, he's able to come back on the Wrecking Ball, and these spawns are just that much faster for the defensive side. It was a great pick, and then Chronic able to just keep that distance between himself and the rest of the DPS on M80. Hmm. Winnable. Super winnable. Again, like a Widow pick can decide at all, just as it, it felt like it did on defense. Happy though, still going to be more than happy to opt into that duel. I uh, wouldn't have it any other way. Two minutes on the clock here. Chronic maybe was just baiting a shot there. Mario Pajamas poised to win the entire series with a compelling push on Junkertown. Chronic needs one pick. Widowmaker, one pick on the attack. Feels like it's the end of that defensive hold. So he's hunting for it, and we're gonna see standstill up until then. But this card has been allowed so much free progress that this one pick on the attack could decide it all. It's been stone here as an easier time of getting to grips with the back line. He was spotted by Lyre briefly though. Oh, and now the counter tracer play from Pelican. This is good. This takes Stone out of the fire, and the one clip is big. What do you do with four players now, Pirates in Pajamas? Looks like they're gonna back away. They have to, because if they get staggered, or if they give over any more ultimate charge, or like Pelican could have a pulse bomb by the end of this one. They, they can drag this fight out, bros. This could go yeah. on and on and on. If they can catch any in here, that's another 10 seconds added to the timer for Pirates in Pajamas to be back as a whole unit. Regardless, it gets us down to under one minute. One good fight left for Pirates in Pajamas. Yeah, but Happy wants a pick. He's gonna peek over to have the potential to just stop this attack push in its tracks. But pay attention to Ultraviolet. Almost this is Katsuna rush on mine, and, and that could be the end of this attacking push here for Pip and their dreams of making it to the main stage just like that. Strider's taking too much damage here. This slows things up on Pirates in Pajamas. Katsune Rush plus like a Diva Guard could allow you to blow up like a Kiriko if Anion's not going to be ready for this. So he has to recall. He's been struggling against Pelican here who's stepped up to counter this Tracer flank. Here's a rush now from Ultraviolet. Gonna match Anion's. Okay, a disengage here from M.A. They're back away, so some space created here by Strider. Khan's getting very, very close. Who's gonna touch it? Horse getting a little bit low. He's gonna get connected in just a moment. He gets the self-destruct on, but will he be able to climb back in is the question. Infrasight is in play, and that's a big stick. Magic Mayfall now is taken out of the fight. It's Strider. Now the half HP with a Terra Surge. It could be the difference maker, but it's a disaster right in front of their eyes. Pirates in Pajamas dreams of winning this match crumble to dust at M80. Hold the line! When it all looked like Pirates in Pajamas was gonna take the reverse sweep over M80, they clutched it! Mitch, they did not look good on that Orisa versus Orisa. They looked really good when Hawk was able to play that D.Va. I, maybe it's just something about the veterancy of this roster where they're not gonna falter under the pressure of knowing that they are about to get reverse swept. I think, but, yeah. Wow. It's so many, sorry, so many rosters have that hurdle to cross where they've got to lose one of those like very close games. I think before they can really uh, have a chance, it, it requires so much on the mental side. And, yeah, unfortunately, wasn't enough for Pirates in Pajamas. I mean, they did get the victory there, M80. However, the the struggle on the Eraser Mirror does make me worry moving forward because the Eraser compositions have been very dominant in this particular region. Uh, a lot of teams very much heavily rely on them, map dependent of course. So for them to struggle against a team which quite frankly shouldn't even or isn't really considered of the same caliber as they are, that will make me worry moving forward and I think that's definitely something that other teams will be able to exploit. However, they of course made it work here at the very end and also in just a few days, Happy and Pelican will be joining the squad. Imagine that duo popping off without having ping issues. I mean, sheesh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like, right? Yeah. I think that's the that's the thing, right, Mitch? Is that like they're on ping, and that's something I think that we can't uh, uh, like forget when looking at how that Arisa versus Arisa did look. Is a key factor of that is the ability to work together as a team and have your DPS actually like do something.
Yeah, I mean, that was like the best chance you have, I think, to get a win against M80 because once the reinforcements arrive, the team definitely takes a step up. Let's actually uh, take a look or listen in rather at the winning moments here from this squad. I'm okay, come I'm here, okay, come I'm here. Come here, come here. Nailson. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
And I, I mean, I can always appreciate a meta where tracers can be such different makers. It's just so much fun to watch those explosive tracer plays. And we were blessed with so many great ones in uh, the Overwatch League and now, of course, also in OWCS. And now it is time to chat with our winners. We have Liar joining us for a quick chat. So, Liar, thank you so much for taking the time. It's great to see you again. It's been a hot minute. And, of course, a big congratulations on the dub. Uh, walk me through some of the map choices here starting on a low note and then we're praising you i swear <laughs> new queen street suravasa looked shaky from you guys which was the same we saw from you as well just yesterday what is it about those maps that causes an issue or is it just the opposition unlucky cursed what's going on um well thanks for having me back and new queens Everybody has been avoiding new queens for literally the last two stages. Like, I'm not kidding. I don't think, like, every time someone, like, picks new queens, everyone's like, we're banning this. So we just, like, no one plays it. And we feel like it actually, like, uh, it's a good map for us. It's it's good for our DPS and tank. Um, last two days, like, uh, I really don't know. Uh, we went up 2-0 in the series going to that third map. And I think, like, we kind of just took our foot off, foot off the gas. And we just started playing sloppy, maybe maybe not respecting. I don't want to, maybe not that. I, I, I don't know. It's just like a feeling. Like we went up 2-0 and I don't know, just kind of, like I said, took our foot off the gas. And for Suravasa, um, we, I mean, after the map, I don't know if you guys know, it's like their Sojourn was just flanking a lot. We kind of were just sitting there letting them flank instead of like pushing her out or just pushing the core. Um, again, just like started playing sloppy and since we're a new team like We've only had like a week and a half of scrims and all of these other teams have been scrimming for a long time So their team plays, you know, compared to ours is, is a little bit better But once we get those issues fixed, then I think we'll be good Yeah, obviously like you mentioned like you guys are really just sort of coming together and of, of course for you like now sort of being a part of what is a pretty ambitious project on the m80 side and we know that because they're making big changes in between stages like their org is really serious about obviously getting some results you've got experience at the highest level of overwatch now coming into this ecosystem how do you feel like the team's coming together because we're really like cross-pollinating from like players from different you know our teams in the past like happy and pelican on this roster and yourself like how's that sort of feel to you know see all the i guess the last few years turn upside down and now you're in this roster uh, with great expectations on your shoulders. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie. If you told me after uh, the season I just had on Valiant that I'd be on a team with Hawk, Kelly, Happy, and UV, <laughs> you know, I'd be like, that sounds about right for for a player. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I, these these players are amazing. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I definitely benefit because of the structure. Um, that's just how it is. I mean. I, I can't say anything bad about these players. They're, they're some of the best players in the world. I just think we need more time. And also with our Koreans coming to America uh, in a couple days, I think it'll fix a lot of our problems and it'll definitely like help us build way more team synergy being all together. Larry, what's your take on the patch that's about to come up? Uh, we've asked a couple of teams this now, but since you guys have made it through this group stage, you get to dodge it and have a little bit more time before the main event to figure it out. So are you looking forward to that? Do you feel like your team is going to benefit from that patch coming through? Um, so, I mean, I just want to say during the match, after the second map, we were just like, let's win this so we don't have to play next week. And we kept saying that after we lost, just like, please, please win. We don't want to play next weekend with a new patch change. I'm going to be honest. I don't know why that's happening during the middle of a group stage. Besides that, Keep it I haven't really it's taken... <laughs> yeah i guess but um i haven't i haven't really looked at the patch notes i heard there's like ball changes and stuff um i mean it could i'm not gonna lie i really don't like this meta it feels really mickey mouse i think a lot of these i think a lot of teams that aren't better than these teams like mechanically like you can say like oh like we have the better players we have pelly happy hawk like and we're still going map fights against these teams that's no diss to pip i i think their players are like not bad but like it just feels like teamwork is heavily relied on, so that's kind of working against us. Um, either way, like I said, our Koreans are coming, and I think having a week of practice with them on the new patch is, is definitely going to benefit us a lot. Mm. 
Absolutely. And of course, you get to, you know, lean back and just watch other teams figure it out and take some notes from that. So that's uh, definitely a big... Uh, big advantage uh making it directly into the main event but that's it from us here uh, thank you so much liar for joining us best of luck in the main event for you and your squad we can't wait to see more of you all right thank you guys bye